The chip world remains at a standstill, America's not rescinding its charge anytime soon, and China refuses to sit back. Even with the chip ban placed on the latter, Beijing has constantly been firm on its resolve to be technologically independent, no matter what Washington throws at them. They say fortune favors the bold, and China is just that. With ASML still being resolute in supplying China with lithography machines, except from its most advanced equipment, E, U, V, S, and China's constant stride to getting better and better, the onus is on China to break the wheels of the Western monopoly. Think that's far-fetched? Get ready to have your minds blown. In today's world, semiconductors are all-encompassing. Serving as the brains behind any form of advanced technologies, from artificial intelligence and quantum computing to cloud systems, you'd find this tiny, but crucial component everywhere. Do you know cutting-edge chips go hand-in-hand -hand with the advanced military tools in this contemporary era? Why do you think China got banned from getting its hands on ASML's advanced extreme ultraviolet E, U, V, lithography machines in the first place? Viewed as a threat to national security, Washington, led by Trump's administration, rolled out a series of measures to cripple Beijing and thus slow down its progress. With Biden taking over, things got even more chaotic. More and more measures were implemented to curb China's extremely rapid growth in several areas of technology, especially in the field of semiconductors, military, and artificial intelligence. The bigger picture though, is that either the success or failure of these measures would have astronomical effects on both nations and the majority, if not all, of the big boys in between. Over the years, the United States of America has been on the throne. You may call it competition or greed, but you'd be hard-pressed to think they'd be keen on sharing their podium. Seeking to maintain its lead and protect its interests in quantum technology, nanotechnology, AI, military endeavors, and most importantly, national security, Washington deemed it fit to restrict the exportation of chips below 14 to 16 nanometers non-type flash memory over 128 layers, and other crucial tools needed to make advanced semiconductors like, you guessed right, E, U, V, lithography machines to China. As things stand, these new restrictions prohibit China from getting their hands on advanced chips of high quality or advancements, which can operate at surreal performances up to a minimum of 300 trillion operations per second and fast interconnect speeds up to a minimum of 600 gigabytes per second. China can't even get any equipment used to manufacture advanced memory or logic chips. Here's a fun fact. Did you know the latest restrictions also target individuals? Before, the restrictions were merely targeted to companies, but now, private individuals have been dragged into the fold. Even if a bona fide American citizen or a green card holder tries to come to China's aid in developing its homegrown semiconductor industry, he or she would have to apply for prior approval. This move undoubtedly affects the several senior executives in China's semiconductor industry who so happen to have American citizenship. You don't even need to be told that the ban placed on China acted as a major blow. The Made in China 2025 initiative, which was launched in 2015, has been put at serious risk of jeopardy. For those who aren't aware, China, led by President Xi Jinping, has been working overtime to be at least 40% independent in chip manufacturing by 2020 and 70% by 2025. To add more emphasis on China's lofty ambitions, did you know they were only about 30% self-sufficient in 2019? More than doubling one's self-sufficiency in merely six years seems like a task too big for anyone to dare, but China simply isn't anyone. They'd tread any necessary part, no matter how challenging it is, to achieve the ultimate goal. Alas, that doesn't mean it'd be an easy ride. As a matter of fact, it's anything but that. Realistically, China still lacks a large research team in the field of semiconductors, and even more glaringly, China's semiconductor industry still lacks its innovation mechanism, for now. Virtually every single material, spare part, or chemical crucial to the production of high-end semiconductors either comes from Europe, Japan, or China's major stumbling block, the USA. After being cut off by America and its allies, including Japan and the Netherlands, do you think China would be able to reach a 70% chip self-sufficiency rate by 2025? While we leave you to ruminate on that, all is far from being over. China has filed a World Trade Organization complaint against America's export controls, but it'd be unwise for them to fold their arms and let things play out. After all, both parties are fully aware that such a petition could take years for it to be dealt with, and to make matters worse, there's no guarantee whatsoever that the issues currently in play would be resolved. In light of this, China needed to be more proactive, and boy have they been. With the help of everything still permissible as far as America's export restrictions are concerned, including ASML's deep ultraviolet D. U. V. 
Lithography Machines China has been focusing on its domestic chip process nodes. Right now, China's domestic chip process nodes are mainly between 90 nanometers and 28 nanometers, which obviously aren't as advanced as 14 nanometers or smaller nodes, but they can still meet the demand for the vast majority of technological applications. Speaking of cutting edge chips, though, manufacturing them requires the very best technology can offer. Currently, the world's most advanced lithography machine is ASMLZ, U, V, but, made only in the Netherlands by the Dutch firm, the Western monopoly is significant. Plus, they're super expensive. Did you know just one E, U, V, a lithography machine is worth up to $120 million? Most countries in the world wouldn't dream of buying one, and even if they had the means, it'd be impossible. Take China, for example, thanks to the restrictions, Chinese companies can't purchase one as it wouldn't be delivered. To overcome this, China's best bet is to make use of another asset from the same firm, D. U. V. S. According to reports, ASML and China SMIC have signed a $1.2 billion order agreement regarding the firm's D. U. V. Lithography machines. Right now, the importance of ASML's assistance to China cannot be overstated. D. U. V. S. may not be close to E. U. V. S. in terms of advancements but take nothing away from it, it is still a capable beast. The good thing though is that China's relationship with ASML isn't one-sided. China may need the Dutch firm, but the reverse is still the case. ASML knows it can't let go of the Chinese market without putting up a worthy fight at the very least. According to ASML's financial report, the first quarter of this year saw a net sale of up to 4.4 billion euros. The new order is around 4.7 billion euros, and amongst that figure, up to 11 lithography machines were exported to mainland Chinese companies with the aim of assisting the development of Chinese chips. Considering the order increments, it's clear that China and ASML are inseparable, for now. In interpretation, China would continue shipping lithography machines to mainland China, or at least what they're allowed to. Whether or not the Dutch firm is keen on genuinely aiding China or after its finances, it still stands resolute in exporting its equipment to China, despite the stance of America and the Netherlands. Alas, China is walking on a rope. If things continue like this, the cycle will remain, and maybe even worse than before. China's entire semiconductor industry would completely depend on ASML lithography machines, and the Western monopoly would still be clear for all to see. Luckily, China is aware of this. The nation's goal of being at least 70% self-sufficient by 2025 is still in the running. Right now, China has been working on several projects to give them the edge against America, with one of the notable mentions being photonic chips, a field where they remain head and shoulders above everyone else. The monopoly would be bound, battered down, and broken if the ultimate goal were achieved. Yin Jiao, the founder of China Micro Semiconductors, boldly insists China's semiconductor manufacturing field is merely 5 to 10 years behind the global stage. It's hard to say he's far from the truth. After all, with China continually pressing hard, the gap between China and the West would be bridged, just look at the current state of affairs. Right now, Huawei High Silicon has achieved 5 nanometers research and development results and has successfully built the Kirin 9000 chip. Did you know Zhiguang Zanru has designed a 6 nanometers chip, set to be mass-produced and launched in July? SMIC is doing well in the 7 nanometers chip manufacturing technology field, and according to reports, Shanghai Microelectronics is set to deliver a 28 nanometers lithography machine. China is also nurturing the next generation of talents. Tsinghua University has recently established the College of Integrated Circuits to coach talents in the field of integrated circuits in areas like system integration, integrated circuit design and methodologies, as well as its applications, and many more. With all of the juicy developments coming from China, things are getting more interesting. More than ever, China has placed a lot of emphasis on designing chips, manufacturing them, and also nurturing homegrown talents ahead of the future. With strong support from the government, including funding, it's only a matter of time before the Western monopoly finally gets shattered. But what do you think about the chess game between the global superpowers, America and China? Do you think China could complete its self-sufficiency goal before the stipulated time frame creeps up on them, or do you perhaps feel it's a task not even China could accomplish? Let us know in the comments, see you there.